You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and this is the podcast where you will get expert advice about the heavy duty parts you buy and keep you informed about what's happening in the industry. This episode is sponsored by TruckPartsInventory.com. Lowering costs per mile is all about finding the right part quickly. At TruckPartsInventory.com, you will save time by searching inventory from around North America in one place. You will save money by having the option of buying new, used, or aftermarket parts. You'll save yourself work by sending a parts request and having companies contact you. TruckPartsInventory.com is easy to use and it's free. Go to TruckPartsInventory.com today. Not all parts are manufactured to the same specifications. All parts are tested, but are they tested and tortured? In this episode, we are going to speak to a floor mat manufacturer that proudly advertises that their parts are not only tested, but also tortured. We're going to find out exactly what that means. I'm happy to introduce Steve Hansen of Minimizer. Steve, welcome to the podcast. Jamie, thanks for having me. Steve, can you explain what it means when Minimizer tortures its products? Sure. So that's actually kind of the fun part. Uh, we've, I've, you know, I've been with the company just over 17 years, and we had about 11 employees uh, when I started. And we actually test and torture the products. And so, especially um, years ago, that really meant just grabbing a baseball bat or a sledgehammer and smacking our stuff around, or buying competitors' products and doing the same, and just seeing how our products hold up, how our competitors' products hold up. Um, in the trucking industry, it's real abuse, right? And so that was the best way we could do it. Um, Today, we use uh, third-party testing facilities that are a little bit uh, more uh, refined than we used to, but um, same principles. They go through wear tests. So like on our seats, um, they would would push down and twist and lift up and push down and twist and lift up. So it simulates X number of years of usage basically on a seat, and they can do that in just a, um, a few days. It is truly amazing over time how the technology has advanced to allow us to, you know, we can shake a truck to pieces if we want to when we're testing right. all these parts. And yeah, so I can imagine, like in my mind's eye, I see these, you know, robotic arms coming down and testing things and getting really sophisticated and kind of pushing these products to the limits. That must be an exciting thing to have seen develop over 17 years. Yeah, it's super cool. I mean, it's I, it's just, it's fun to see that stuff, right? I'm just a guy that watches the show, like how it's made and all that. It's just, uh, it's really interesting to enter the R&D facilities and see what they come up with for testing on this stuff. So we're talking about floor mats today. What material do you make your floor mats out of and why is that important? Why do you make those choices? Sure. So um, the material choice actually took us quite a bit of time on the floor mats. It's a proprietary blend. It's basically poly and rubber, um, similar to what you'd see. Like um, I know there's other brands out, WeatherTech and Husky and these other guys. Um, we actually get quite a few comments that they um, from truck drivers that have both that they prefer our material because it doesn't curl like some others that you see on the market. Um, it's got a nicer, uh, you know, in the cab you still want it to be soft and comfortable. But at the same time, it's got to be durable enough where with the work boots and everything, you know, you're not rubbing holes in it and all that. So again, back to the testing and torturing, we did simulation tests. And of course, we're able to put a lifetime guarantee on the floor mats that you'll never be able to put a hole in it or anything like that. I was an outside salesperson for many years and I put a lot of miles on and right where my heel, you know, sat to press the accelerator it wore right through the rubber, right through the carpet, right to the floorboard yeah. with enough miles. So that's a big Very claim common. to be able to say it'll never happen because truck drivers drive a lot more miles than even sales guys do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's very common. So, and those floors can be 800 to $1,200 to replace and they have to replace them because otherwise they get a lot of corrosion in there. Right. So the floor mat uh, economically makes a lot of sense, even for huge fleets. So you're selling to all makes. There's a lot of different configurations. What's involved on the engineering side to ensure that each floor mat that you sell fits perfectly into the truck it was designed for? Sure. So they really are laser measured. So they use lasers to scan the cab. Uh, on the heavy duty side, it's it's quite a bit more complicated than on the automotive side, right? So if you had like a, a floor mats for a Toyota Corolla, well, 
they're all the same, right? So you mold, you'd scan one one Toyota Corolla and you'd you'd pound them out. But for us, we only do them for heavy duty trucking. Uh, there's just a lot of different um, ways to spec a cab, whether it's well, for one thing, it's automatic or manual transmission. So that's a big big part of the floor. Um, otherwise, with different seats, um, the passenger side can be a box seat, a battery seat, a regular seat. Um, a lot of trucks are putting controls uh, in between the seats. And so we we create the floor mats in a way that there's mold lines built into it. And so based on your specific cab, there's a cut line. And so you can cut the floor mat with a, just a basic utility knife. And it, it is still looks like it's custom molded right for your cab because it'll go right around that stuff. Yeah, I never thought of that. I, I know there's a one type of battery that's not like a st- typical Group 31 square battery. It's got kind of a mold to it. It's got all these like cylinders that's part of the casing and it yeah. sits underneath the seat. I'm just trying to, it's been a while since I sold them. I'm trying to remember if, yeah. that, if that's a Peterbilt or a Freightliner that has that uh, commonly under the seat. But I never thought about the batteries under the seat affecting the floor mats. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a lot of pieces that affect that. So we just got to, it takes a while to get all of that in mind before we're able to make the mats, but we've got about 60 part numbers right now for medium duty and heavy duty trucks. And uh, the response from the, from the end users using them is they love them. They're awesome. So when you make the mat, you, you talked about cut lines. I, I wasn't aware of that. So I want to kind of go back and just make sure I understand that correctly. So let's say I have a uh, 2015 Kenworth T800. Mm-hmm. And I, I order my mats based on my application. Now, what do I get exactly? And what do I have to do to make it fit? Sure. So there's full instructions in there, but you'll order it for either an automatic or a manual. So obviously the manual's got a hole in it, right? Um, and then based on your specifics, so if you had um, maybe some controls or a, a passenger seat that was different than normal spec, um, they'll it looks like cool lines just built in. So if you didn't, there's a lot of, there's a lot of times you don't have to cut them at all. You just pop them in and they fit perfect. But if you have kind of a custom piece in your cab, you might have to cut one section out, let's say. Um, so when you cut that out, there's a, a molded line. It's like a bump up on the floor mat. So you'd cut right along that bump up and then it, it becomes the new edge, right? So it just looks like an edge. So once you cut it, it looks like it's always been molded that way. And these mats, it's not like an automotive where you buy one for one side and one for the other. They actually go through the whole cab. Uh, it is one for, it's two mats. It's a, there's, a, there's a driver's side and a passenger side. And then depending on the cab, some of them have a center mat also. So depending on the situation, there's a, it's either a, two, a two-piece set or a three-piece set. Okay. The advantage to that is that you can take them out and power wash them easier. Right. right? I've right. got both, right? So I've got like a GMC Yukon at home. So the... The passenger driver side is easy to take out and power wash and put back in. The center one in the back sucks because it's so big you can't really take it out, right? The kids spill all the stuff on it. You got to clean it, then take it out and clean it, and then put it back. So having them individual is actually a little nicer anyway. That that makes a lot of sense. No, you know what? I I don't know the answer to these questions, and there might be someone listening who would want to know that. Other people might go, well, of course they're that way. What an idiot! Why'd you ask that no, question? No, we're all but, learning. This is yeah. good. That's right. That's right. You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we're speaking with Steve Hansen of Minimizer. We're talking about floor mats. Now, your customers obviously are willing to pay a premium price to buy the best product on the market, the tortured, tested product that's that's going to stand up and have that guarantee that basically is a lifetime guarantee. What is the cost of going with a cheaper product? Maybe we could get into that a little more. Sure. So kind of tying it back to the testing, I mean, you, yeah, you get what you pay for, right? And, we, and we've seen that time and time again on the testing side. There's, there are a lot of cheap knockoffs, um, specifically to the fenders. I mean, there's, there's, shoot, there's 20 different companies making a poly fender right now. Um, and a lot of them are just terrible. I mean, bad. And so what the, the bad thing about that is it gives us a bad name because you see them on the road and they're cracked and they look terrible and you're like, huh, I would never buy a poly fender like that. Well, it's a different material. It's formed using a different process. It's a completely different product. Um, so we've done a pretty good job, I think, of branding ourselves as Minimizer, which is separate from all this other poly fenders. Um, boy, we get, we'll get warranty claims on fenders that are other people's stuff and everything else. Um, but yeah, there's, there is a substantial difference in 
material forming process and quality. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I was wondering with the floor mats, like what impact do you potentially have like financially that maybe a driver or a mechanic wouldn't think of off the top of their head, but they buy a cheaper product, the product fails, it wears right through. Yeah. What exactly is the cost of not putting in a high quality mat in inside the cab of your truck? So um, in-cab corrosion is a monster topic right now. Um, at the Technology and Maintenance Council meetings, they, they have uh, full sessions dedicated to it. Um, it's very expensive for cab driver or for fleets right now and for owner operators um, that are having issues with in-cab corrosion. And it all comes back to all the chlorides and stuff that we're putting on the road, right? And the number one way for those chlorides to get into your truck is off the driver's boots. And so even, even a lot of cabs have a rubber floor. And so when we came out with the floor mats, uh, I think it was in 2014, originally I was thinking, you know, if they have a rubber floor, there isn't much of a reason to put mats in just because the rubber floor would kind of do it anyway. Um, and then at my first TMC meeting, I realized I was dead wrong because the rubber mat gets a hole in it r really easily, actually. And then all of those liquids go naturally right to that hole. And then the fleet or the driver doesn't even realize there's an issue until the, the cab floor starts to get kind of spongy. And then they pull that rubber mat back and it's already rusted all the way through, right? So it's a major safety issue, but it's also a huge expense for the fleets. And it's something that they could avoid with a set of $200 floor mats. And that's the thing about this. When you go to the Technology and Maintenance Council, in like we were just there in Atlanta a yeah. few weeks ago. Now this is this maintenance council is for the fleets. And you learn about how important preventative maintenance is. You spend so much money acquiring a piece of iron, right? We're talking six figure. Yeah. And then you have a major safety issue and problem with that because of the lack of, of, of investing. And like you said, a $200 floor mat, it's just incredible. You don't think about it, but when you invest that much money, you want to protect that investment in every way possible. So when you think about that scenario of drivers getting in and out of the truck and dragging, you know, mud, water, the calcium chloride, salt, yep. sand into the truck. Cleaning is part of that preventative maintenance. So you've invested in the mats, but you want to keep it clean. How easy is it to clean the, like, like do you just take them out and power wash them? Is that how yeah, you I mean, do it? It couldn't be easier. That's exactly what you do. You just pull it out, power wash it, and put it back in. And then when you pull it out, it's one of those things. You pull it out and lo and behold, underneath the mat, your floor is pristine, right? So if you're leasing trucks, um, a lot of fleets have told me that when they return their leased uh, vehicle, they're getting dinged 800 bucks, a thousand bucks a truck because there's damage to the floor. Um, if you own your trucks, right, your resale value certainly is impacted by the, the shape the floor is in. Um, we had one fleet owner, um, I talked to him personally, uh, he has 440 trucks and he was, he actually went on camera and said, you know, I put floor mats in all 440 trucks um, and I, I did the math on it right down to the, to, the cost of cleaning, what I'm doing for floor replacements. He goes at that for the life cycle of a truck, which for him was about five years. Uh, he figures he saves a thousand bucks a truck. And so he said, I just put in, sure. I just spent 80 grand on floor mats, but he goes, I think I saved $440,000. Incredible. It, it yeah. goes back to a couple of the old axioms, right? Like you mentioned already, you rarely get more than you pay for. Yeah. And uh, there's another one. It's pay me now or pay me later. And if you pay yeah. me later, it's going to be a lot more money. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's that that just rings true for sure. Now you already touched on it, but Minimizer manufactures other products. Can you give us an overview of the other products that you manufacture for commercial trucks and trailers? Sure. So if you go to our website, we kind of um, in the marketing world we call them funnels. Um, we funnel people into three basic categories. So we've got on the truck, in the truck, and fix the truck. Right, so on the truck, we've got um, fenders, brackets, um, a product called Fast Flaps. It's like a mud flap uh, holder. We have mud flaps, um, toolboxes, slick plates. They're a fifth wheel slick plate that instead of greasing the, uh, the fifth wheel, it's like a poly lube plate. Um, and then in the truck, we've got uh, um, the floor mats, truck seats, and mattresses. And then for fix the truck, we do a line of workbenches, tool caddies, and uh, our toolboxes are there also. Well, thanks for giving us that overview. Uh, we are going to have a link in the show notes. We'll mention it in a moment of how people can find all this information. By the way, those fast flaps, great product. I love selling it when I was in parts distribution. 
probably the subject of a follow-up interview with you. Steve, if there is one thing you want listeners to take away from today's conversation, what's that one thing? Um, I would say, you know, Minimizer is a really down-to-earth company. Um, Just real people. We're based out of Minnesota. Um, You call in, you'll get a live person on the phone. Um, We were born from a truck driver out of necessity. Um, We're very connected to the trucking industry. So uh, we're with, uh, you know, charitable pieces. We're at most trade shows, both local and national trade shows. Um, We've got real faces, real names, real people. So um, yeah, we're proud of that. We're proud to be connected to the trucking industry. It's good people. We give back and we feel like we've got really nice products that we're proud of. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with Steve Hansen of Minimizer. To learn more, go to minimizer.com. Links are in the show notes. Steve, thank you for being on the podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Have you subscribed to the podcast yet? Go to heavydutypartsreport.com today to subscribe to the podcast. And don't forget to give us a five-star rating and review on the podcast player of your choice. I'd like to remind everyone to focus on cost per mile over purchase price and... Let's keep those trucks and trailers rolling.